bum bum ba bum ba bum I am finding out what I'm gonna do today. So what are we gonna do today? What are we doing? Well I guess the first thing to do is <clears throat> I said the first thing to do is Something's wrong with this. There we go. Something's wrong with my snapper. Don't. Okay, so most of you are probably watching after the fact on YouTube. So don't forget the whole like, subscribe, uh, bell icon thing. And any cubic photon is like awesome for miniatures and stuff. So, uh, oh. <clears throat> For anyone who watched Tuesday's show, I, uh, got this printed out. He's primed in gray, and I gave him a very light dry brushing just to bring out the detail so it's easier to see when people are looking at it. I will be painting it later this month. Because one of the things I'm doing coming up is on the 23rd and the 30th, my game nights. Hello, Kim! On my game nights, our game master is going to be out of town. So I'm going to be teaching my the rest of the players in the game how to paint. And while they're painting theirs, I'll be painting mine. Also, I printed out six of my orc archers. These guys. And that's going to be their practice pieces. So that they don't, you know, when learning how to do something, they do it on here so that they don't mess up their actual character model. And I'll put this back in my case. I also found these sets of cheap but serviceable brushes um, they are one three five and six sizes so that should be good for beginners and a bunch of these little plastic palettes you know six little divots not to be confused with ten little indians which is a song that just really that's a values dissonance there. So anyway, as you can see down here, it's a mystery show. Meaning right now, it's a mystery to me what I'm going to do. Now, it could be technique. Oh, that's okay, Ken. Well, we could be doing a technique. We could be doing a critter. We could be doing... Uh, random weirdness. I don't know. Oh, it's this one. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of shaving time again. See, if you notice, i got a bald spot right along the line of the chin here and here. I don't know why. And as you can see also, I don't grow much here compared to here. Go figure. Weird facial hair growth. Anyway. So, do any of y'all have a suggestion for tonight besides yet another PC race class combo? Anyway, okay, we have a critter vote from Kim, and I know we've also got Mark in there, and so Mark, what do you want for tonight's show?
<laughs> I had to take a look, see how that looked on screen, and it, it, it didn't look as weird as I was hoping. Anyway, so Critter. Critter's pretty broad definition. I mean, good lord, how many monster manuals and monstrous manual supplements were out for second edition alone? And that's not counting all those in that flood of third party things for 3 5. In, or sorry, D20. There's a lot of critters. A lot. Not, not a little. A lot. I, I actually had that. For a while there in second edition, they were publishing supplements to the Monster Manual in loose leaf format with holes for binders. I had enough to fill three binders. What's unusual is that style of character supplement didn't begin with D&D. It began with DC Heroes by Mayfair. And apparently TSR thought, hey, that's a brilliant idea. We'll do that for second edition because we got a lot of stuff for second edition. You know? It's a lot of stuff. Lots of stuff. Yeah, go figure. Oh. And all of a sudden, my brain is saying, like, gee, go look up something, because i gotta ch I got to check on something that's, that's, like, really confusing me. Um, let's see. D&D &D Edition Timeline. Editions of D&D. &D. Oh, here we go. All right. So, apparently, <sighs> no, this isn't a good timeline. All right. Here we go. Okay, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons came out in 1977, with the Player's Handbook appearing in that year. No, oh, the, the Monster Manual, weather. 78 was the Player's Handbook, 79 was the Dungeon Master's Guide. And then, Unearthed Arcana in 85. So it lasted 12 years before 2nd Edition, which went, started from 1989, and lasted until 1999, because 3rd Edition came out in 2000, and 3.5 in 2003. That lasted 5 years. Replaced with 4th edition, that lasted 6 years before being replaced with 5th edition. 5th edition is 5 years old. And it's looking like it's still, it, it's almost ready to maybe be fully prepared. So, yeah, we got boatloads of potential critters and additions and even multiple names for the same critter like you know the eye tyrant or the beholder the mind flayer or the illithid the land shark or the boule and yes it's pronounced boule imagine a campaign where you're all playing monsters with character classes and someone decides to make a land shark bard and names him Robert Boulay. <sighs> yes, I went there. Just don't make it, an, number one, an abnormally realistic critter, because realism takes time. Or number two, an abnormally complex critter. Because complexity takes time. And I do want to try and keep this to the two to two and a half hour mark. So, like, 
I mean, I did the beholder. I did. You know, I managed to do in time because the beholder's simple. It's just eye stalks, ball, eyeball, mouth. Your magic is canceled out. And then there's the illicit, but the illicit is rather copyrighted or something that they sued Vival over using them that unless you made them sufficiently different from the pre existing illustrations. Yeah. Or then there's the Nothic, but someone else drew that or sculpted that the other day, so no Nothic for me. Er, whichever that way, whichever that way. And there's already like 15, cause 15 or 16 um, intellect devourers because they've suddenly become popular in 5th edition since they are nasty dangerous. If you're incapacitated, they come up to you. Contested intellect roll, or contested intel intelligence roll. They win, you're dead. Your brain is teleported outside of your body, and they're teleported into your body and take control of your body, and it's now their body. CR2. CR2. And they're frequently found in the company of mind flayers who can incapacitate you like that. Yeah. Super strong, super tough barbarian with low intelligence. Go oh, meet smash. Mind flayer. Bzz. Barbarian. Oh. Intellect devourer. Thank you for the new body, master. Lunch. See, this is why I'm kind of irritated that my monster manual's out in the car. And most of my other monster manuals and that are way back over there in this dark green bookcase. How, how about what, what, what of a critter meet? I, as read? Instead, you mean? Okay, so basically... Where did I put it? Where did I put the darn thing? I don't know. Purple. There it is. It was hidden by the fire, by the energy bolt of the other figure. Like, uh, Tensor's Floating Disc? Okay. Oh, and by the way, just to show you something else I did, just out of boredom. This is the figure of Valandar, the original figure of Valandar the Red, right? I took a print, an older printing of it and I painted it to be when he goes into stealth mode or cast blur or something else that makes him hard to see. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. You missed my sound effects and everything. Yeah. So apparently it's going to be spell effects. Okay. That means I also need to break open 3D Studio Max. Now... What we're going to do is the most common 3D version of 
Yeah, the most common version of uh, the Bigby's hand spells is the grasping hand. So because by the time you're, you know, the original version, it was split up by different levels. It was different spells per level. And you had the grasping hand, the interposing hand, the forceful hand, and the crushing fist. Now it's just Bigby's hand. So I'm just going to do it reaching out and grabbing. Abracadabra. Gonna reach out and grab ya. Spiritual weapons is actually moderately easy. I remember when it was just spiritual hammer. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is... The snapper's working now. What do you go figure? And I'm going to import the basic human figure. And show person in gray. No, freeze selected. Okay, now making a hand can be tricky. T -t -t tricky. Now, does anyone have a player's handbook handy? Because I don't remember how large the hand is. Let me. I'll be right back. Oh, back. Come on, slide out of there. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Oh. I think my. Tablet is confused. One thing I don't like about Android tablets is if they're in pitch black for long enough, they not only fully power down, they fully power down to the point where you need to actually dag them, do a weird hard reset on it. Well, a soft reset. Okay, tablet needs to get plugged in. Plug is in the other room. Yay. Well, let me see. If, let me see if I can find out on the interwebs. So I go to Google. Yay. Size of Big B's hand spells. Okay. All it says is that the hand does not fill its space in the uh, online wiki. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to assume that it's roughly the size of a torso, maybe a little bit bigger. So that way, you know, it doesn't fill the six foot space. Now to make a hand, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a, with a uh, box. Yes, a box. That's going to be the size of the palm. Okay. Now, the only reason we have the miniature there is to get an idea on scale so we can now hide frozen objects. Okay. Now, this is just your basic box. We're going to move it so that it's X and Y of zero. 
the reason for that is so that way we can we know it's centered. Actually, we need to do one other thing: centered object. Now we need to move the y to zero. Okay. Now we need at least four sections for the fingers. Actually, we need four, five, six, seven sections. So that would be three, four, five, seven. Okay, then we need one, two, three, vertically. Edible poly. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take these sections that are the spaces between the fingers, and we're going to shrink them. Then we're going to grab here and pull up. Yay! Let's select here, deselect there. Let's get on the uh, right hand side of it. And we're going to go to soft selection. And we want to make it linear, fall off. So Pinch of 0.333, bubble of 0.333. And then we're going to shrink it until there. Okay. Now we're going to turn off soft selection. Those are located at 0.925, so we're going to select these two that kind of shifted over, and that's 0.925. Okay, there we go. Now, we have our basic shape for our hand. We're going to be doing a lot of tweaking in ZBrush, but the next thing that we need to do is we need to grab these actually let's make it this pull up just a little bit and then grab the center one hey whoo! excuse me nah. now okay we need to do one more thing we need to grab here we need to shrink just a little bit so that uh, the index finger is not inordinately smaller than the rest. Okay, now we're going to make the fingers about as long as the palm. Let's put it, yeah, put it there. However, one thing to note is that now we make the tips a lot shorter. And then we're going to select here. We're going to connect twice. That's going to be where the joints of our fingers are. And now we're going to chamfer these joints a lot less than that. Okay. Now, we're now going to deselect some of these. Actually, no, we need to be selecting on this side. Yeah. We're going to deselect these polygons so that we can make them, we can collapse them vertically. And what we're going to do here, I hit F12, Y of 0. And 48 becomes 16. Now, what I've done, I'm going to turn on edge spaces. 
I have set up the knuckles of the fingers like this so that it will be easier to pose them. And I'm going to pose them individually. Turn. No, I'll do that last, yeah. Let's go ahead, first things first. Let's hide the middle finger. And the pinky. And uh, where is it? Hide selected. The reason for that is because the uh, index and the ring have the same proportions. Alright, now we select down to here. And we're going to bend it a little bit here and then move it forward then we're going to deselect up to there bend it not to be make not to be mistaken for Michael Bendis and then we're going to Okay, now, we select those, we unhide all and hide selected, then we're going to select the middle finger and hide selected. Okay, let's start here. Bend, move, and here we're going to bring this up a little bit because it helps point the knuckle. We select here. And the reason we're doing it this is that we want the pinky to be bent a little bit more than the index and ring. So now we unhide all and select the middle finger. Hide unselected. This way we don't have a, uh, a rather rude sign on our screen. I'm going to bend it just a little. Just enough to make it a little bit more natural than just simply being straight. But not so much that it, again, is an obscene symbol. Unhide all. Yeah, we need to um, bend the uh, tip a little bit more. And apparently Mama's watching Loud House in there. Go figure. There. Now, we have the fingers basic. We're going to do one other thing, and that's we're going to rotate them this way that the fingers are actually graspy. This way, this can be used for either grasping hand or interposing hand. Okay, and a little bit this way. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to select all of the base sections. We're going to add in a single separator. And then we're going to do the same thing with the tips. What this will do is this will help keep it a bit more 
Yeah. Now, when I hit Mesh Smooth, let me go ahead and turn off edge spaces. You can see how it actually kept that knuckle structure. Obviously, there would be a lot of sculpting needed after this. All right, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to grab this, pull it up, grab these two, well, grab this one, and kind of pull it out a little bit, this one this way. Kind of round off the bottom of that. Now, it's time to make the thumb. And so we select here. And rather than just extruding straight, we're going to pull it out like that. And then pull, the, pull those vertexes in this way. We're also going to bring this up a bit. All right. Now we're going to ex we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. We're going to extrude every segment and bend as we go, because it doesn't have as much articulation. The thumb doesn't have as much. Uh, I mean, you got pretty much bend a little bit side, you know, side to side and bend. You don't have the full articulation that you do with the regular fingers. Extrude, not that much there and we're going to shrink it bring it up bring it forward and rotate it a little and then we're going to grab this top set of vertexes and bring it in and then extrude okay and bring it up to there And we're going to select this one and give it one connection. Now we hit Mesh Smooth. And we see we have the basic structure and shape of a hand. However, it's only very, very basic. We also have nothing that it that's connecting it to what will be its base. We can also probably get away... Let's... Let's bring it down to about there and make it a little bit bigger. Just a bit. So it's about the same size as a normal figure. Collapse all. And let's go ahead and hide Frozen again. Okay. Now, where the wrist would be is going to be kind of wispy, misty energy thingies. So what, the way we're going to handle that is going to be kind of tricky. We're going to create a sphere that is set at hemisphere uh, 0.5 okay and that's basically going to be I'm going to use cheap techniques to bring that in and make it be energy that's holding up the actually let's do this this way let's make sure that the x is at zero we're gonna bring it out like that okay now we're gonna grab it let's export the hand Home, 
meshes, brief sculpt, broadcast miniatures. Instead of putting it new, we'll put this in spells. In front OBJ, Big B hand, and then this one will be file export selected. Big B stand. Hand and stand. Yeah. Export. Done. And hello, Emilio. We are making Bigby's hand right now. And if I can do it quick enough, we'll be doing other spells as well. I'm going to go ahead and import. Not in a Titans of Legend. Broadcast miniatures. Spells. Bigby's hand. Subtool append poly mesh import big B stand. Now we're not gonna do the stand until after we've gotten the hand done to a relatively decent tier. So let's break out the tablet via Wacom. This is the current gen into us, by the way, if you are any kind of Knowledge a bit of boldness about them. And let's make sure that we go to Lazy Mouse and turn off Lazy Mouse. Let's open up Auto Masking and turn on Backface Masking. And then we're going to just kind of tone down the intensity to about there. Actually, no, we need to do this with a higher resolution. Okay, and then we're gonna too small. And swell out the knuckles like we usually do. But now we're going to make it bigger and just kind of we're gonna go ahead and, and just swell the whole hand area. Topological. Make it bigger. Grab the back of the hand and pull it out. Grab the base of the hand and pull it out. Because this is where the wrist would be. Okay. That was pretty quick, but we still got a lot of work to do. For example, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use de inflate on a negative. To oh no, better not do it that. Let's go ahead and do it with the uh, smooth. To smooth out, first of all, this needs to get smooth a lot. That that finger got overly biggened. We're gonna smooth the bottoms. Alright, so anyway, we are now going to Dynamesh it. 512, Dynamesh. Okay. Oh, no. We're going to subdivide it even more until it's like there. Uh, 
Okay, 371,000, that's good. Now, I'm going to use deformation. I'm just going to polish the bejesus out of it to try and get rid of some of the seams. Okay, now, polish. Not polish, polish. Z subtract. I'm going to make it bigger. So I can polish away the fingertips. And then going to use move, topological, make it even bigger, grab the fingertips and make them a bit longer. Just to make them a bit more finger like. Now, I'm going to then select something that's it's been bugging me since I noticed it. Alright. Let's tilt it until we got... Yeah, there we go. Select that, and we're going to... Using masking... Grow, grow, sharpen, 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 grow, grow. Do this until we get down to the next. It's usually a good idea to hit sharpen after your second or third grow. Because the grow doesn't so much grow as blur. I don't know why. Okay, we've got a lot of a uh, selection. We're now just gonna blur the, the daylights out of it. And grow the daylights out of it. We're then gonna invert it. And under deformation, we're going to deflate it a little. Yeah, there we go. All right, so now we smooth out all the fingertips. And let's go back to inflate, make it big and weak. And let's make sure we inflate the tip of the thumb a bit. Oh, I forgot I had it. Mostly on the, oh, that's right. I forgot to uh, turn off the back face mask. And then we're going to use the move tool again, grab the tip of it, and pull it out. As the hand is becoming a lot more a lot more naturalistic, isn't it, already? Well, there's areas we need to fix. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and break open the slash tool. And while we're doing that, we turn off Lazy Mouse and reduce that intensity quite a lot. And what we're going to do is we're going to shrink this. And we're just going to kind of draw in some of the wrinkles at the base of the hand. So, for example, I have another one here. Oh, another one here. Stop that! Dag gum! I hate it when it does that. Let's do the initial, the primary wrinkles first. So for example, here. And then, now the next thing is we have a little bit of a Wrinkle it. The wrinkles do that, kind of. Don't 
only here and then like there's a secondary one here and here now we're going to draw in actually let's make it bigger and shallower we're going to draw in our uh, basic palm reading details and just some random yeah so we're already getting a pretty decent hand so now what we need to do is we need to go ahead with the inflate tool back at add 7 let's go ahead and inflate in, in between some of these fingers just because and then we're going to draw on actually me no none of those are strong enough let's increase the intensity yeah And then we're going to smooth out down here and hit one a few times. And then we're going to inflate where the knuckles are. And smooth out around those knuckles. We don't need to do as bad as we do for the regular hands that we model on the figures because it's already got the shape needed this is just refinement and making them look actually yeah that's too much a little bit bigger and a little bit weaker just enough to give it a little bit of bulge Okay. Now, once again, we're going to use the uh, move topological tool to make those uh, fingertips larger. Or I should say longer. Okay. There we go. And now the thumb. Go back to slash, make it smaller, and then looking at my thumb to see where I got some. Okay, now inflate. To add on the back of this knuckle and then actually we need to have it out to here and then here and then we're going to kind of bring this down okay and we have our basic hand shape Now, the next thing to do is to make it tendril. Da, 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 da. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use geometry and we're going to subdivide it quite a bit. And then we're going to dynamate it at 512. Smooth out the top just because. And then divide it until we get. Yeah, that'll do. So, y'all enjoying the uh, hand so far? Next thing is the snake hook brush. Snake hook, basically what it does, it's like the move tool, but it leaves behind some of the geometry as you use it. So we're going to do this. Let's 
is going to be, and then just kind of grab it and pull it out. then another one coming out from here here and use the move tool to move it in place Actually, before I move it in place, I really need to get all my snake hooking done and then re dynamesh it. Mm. Be a whole lot of different little tendrils coming up from this to the hand is what the end result is going to be. And a couple other... Okay, that's too thin. Need to make it a little bit bigger. Okay. And then we're going to go down... We're going to hide the uh, stand. And we're going to grab the... Actually, let's not hide it. We're going to grab down here and pull it back down a little okay now on the big B stand we're going to dynamesh it the reason for that is this way I can now use move topological pretty hef pretty large amount of topological and just move it to touch the hand. Then I'm going to use the snake hook again, but this time much smaller. Just kind of grab and pull out a point on some of these. There we go. And here we have, without a base, the Big B's hand spell. But it doesn't look quite right. That stand is just a base. It's nothing more. We need to add in some texture to it. Wouldn't you agree? Something to just catch the paintbrush and the eye. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to use the uh, Orb Cracks brush. Shrink it a little bit. Turn off Lazy Mouse. Ram. And shrink just a bit more. Make it a little bit deeper. And we're going to go ahead and just draw on... 
Actually, no, better not use the orb cracks. Better use slash. Just to maintain the more organic look. And no, we need to add in Lazy Mouse. This isn't a situation where you do want Lazy Mouse. Simply because you want that smooth effect line that Lazy Mouse gives you. Let's increase that radius and increase the depth. Alright, we want it bigger. Yeah, sometimes you got to experiment, play around with what you're trying to do before you see how it looks. There we go. Just something to catch the eye and to catch the paintbrush. Now that's the thing to remember is even if you never plan on painting, it's always a good idea to sculpt with an eye towards the painting. Because someone will want to paint it. And it's... And the... And the, uh, the friendlier it is to painting, you know, the more they'll enjoy it. Okay, that gives a bit more of a style and a swirl to it. It doesn't need a lot of detail, it just you know, just something to catch the eye. Let's make it visible. Let's frame out. We're gonna use move. And we're going to grab that tail here and kind of bring it down deep into the core. Okay, Bigby's hand. Okay, merge down. Always okay. Geometry, Dynamesh. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to do, we need a base. And, of course, I made one recently that is perfect for it. Okay. Import. Bases. Magic circle. And then go to deformation. Offset Y. And we zoom out, make sure that it's... Okay, we need to go down just a little bit. Whoops, wrong way. I'm watching an area right... There we go. Okay. So that is our base. It's in the magic circle. We go sub to well first before we do anything else we've got to dynamesh this because it's currently at a low polygon level. Okay. Merge down. Yay. Close the sub tool, go to geometry, and dynamesh it again. And here we have it, it's currently at 1.5 million polygons. Go to Z plugin, decimation master, and we're going to go to 70,000 triangles. It doesn't have chain mail, it doesn't have scales, but it's, we want to keep a significant chunk of the detail visible.
my suggestion would be to print it out with a... If you've got a resin printer, print it out of a clear resin, you know. Whether it's green or red or any other clear color or translucent color. And then paint the base, but not the energy, because it looks kind of cooler that way. Maybe, maybe, yeah, 70,000 triangles, yeah. But I was going to say, maybe take it and give it uh, a coat of matte varnish, or satin varnish actually works a little bit better. And then give it a wash, a thinned down wash, with say a mix of red and yellow to kind of make it you know or or darker or give it a or better yet just give it just a straight red tone wash it'll let the details pop without actually making it opaque okay so now we're going to export this back to broadcast spells big bees and spell. Okay, that took about... I have enough time to do a second one. Set this out of the way for a second while I prep the next one. Whoops. Hold on a second. I have a small problem with the power cord on my monitor. Every, every so often, if it gets bumped, the uh, cord pulls out. It's a matter of the, it's just, you know, it just fits, it's kind of loose a little. Anyway. The next thing that we're going to do is, um, all right, if we're going to do spiritual weapon, what weapon do we want to do? Now here's the deal with spiritual weapon. We can do multiple of them. Simply because all we gotta do is make the shape that's supporting the weapon and just swap out what weapon it is. As long as there's at least one piece that wraps around where a hand would go. So obviously we need a hammer, because the first and second editions were spiritual hammer. All right, <clears throat> make sure I've got it on. Yeah, I do. Okay, Let's go to here. Hammer comes to mind. Okay, we're gonna have this. We're gonna keep this here. We're gonna use the. Actually, let's start off with one of the swords, simply because. It's got the smallest area to hold. And we want to make sure it's holding in the right place. All right, so we go to props. We're going to go to old. And the first thing that we're going to pull up is Arming Sword Celtic right hand. Okay. Oh, no, that's right. That's the thin blade one that doesn't work too well. Let's go ahead and import. It's under morph three. No. Morph 2. Yeah. Arming Sword Celtic, right hand. We are then going to, with restrictions on, that's what this is up here. We're going to rotate it until it's vertical. And then let's see, that's uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Let's go back to. Let's go to 70. And just so we can make sure we're placing it in a spot that is appropriate, let's go ahead, also let's move this to X of 0. We want it to be kind of centered on the construct. Let's bring it just kind of up a little bit. Okay. Hide frozen objects. And... No, I don't like that one. I don't know why. 
let's just go to longsword 2 or or yeah longsword o2 right hand import okay x of 0 and then make it vertical and then about 70 degrees and then up a bit we're going to shrink it just a little okay now what I did that for was we're gonna we're gonna load in three different weapons the sword a hammer and one of the other one other import let's see where is no I don't like that hammer I, that's that's one of the first hammers I did what did I call it file import Horseman's hammer, that's what I called it. Okay, so now we're going to rotate it 45 degrees and 70 degrees. And then we're going to move it so that the bottom of the hammer is down where the handle of the sword is. Make sure we're doing it right. Yeah. Okay. There we go. And then the next one is going to be. All right. Axe or mace for the next one. Well, axe, mace, any other any other type of weapon? Didn't collapse. It is 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. I better not sing that because it'll get flagged by Disney. Never challenge the House of Mouse. You will not enjoy it. Anyway. Oh, I just realized something. Pardon me for a second. I just realized this whole time I've been logged in under my primary account and not the uh, 3D Sculpted Minis account. Yay me. Okay. And pop out chat. Bring it over here. <laughs> well, my original account, um, I sort of lost the password to long before they were linked to Google. And I don't remember what email address I used to create it. It was just Valandar. So I had to create a new one as Valandar 2. Meanwhile, back to this. 
Okay. So, mace, axe, tollbar, scimitar, um, ugly thumper. What should I do for the third weapon for the spiritual weapon? By the way, I'm going to go ahead while we're waiting. I'm going to show you how I'm going to handle the primary stand. Okay. Now. Here we go. Here. Actually, let's go ahead and bring this back to there. Wait a minute. And then bring it back that way. Then we're going to, rendering, enable. And we're going to make it. Make it thicker. Just a bit thicker. Thick enough that we know it will support. And then we're going to select that and shrink. We're going to make it big enough to where it's almost poking out of the sphere. Actually, let's bring it over this way and rotate it a little bit. Then we're going to start selecting these and just growing them. So it starts off as a nice little thick little tendril and ends up as the bit holding the weapon. We're then going to select ring. Connect. To there. Okay. And we're going to mesh smooth it. Oh, no we're not. I forgot one thing. Loop. All right, let me go ahead and shrink, delete. Tulwar, yeah. See, the thing about a Tulwar, this is a nice little interesting little tidbit. Um, in the early days of Hollywood, when they didn't really care about historical accuracy one diddly squat, it was thought that the look of an actual scimitar was more than a bit, um, well, shall we say, wimpy. Because a scimitar is slender. It is a graceful weapon, not a brutish weapon. So to make the scimitar-wielding enemies look more imposing, instead of a scimitar, they gave them a tulwar. Interesting, eh? Okay, so file import and is it that's not in there? Is it? Where did I put it? I th oh, Falchion. Falchion and Tolwar are mostly the same thing. Okay, and now 70. We And then we're going to bring it up to 
here. X is zero. We're going to shrink it just a little bit. Okay. And then bring it over until it's right in there. Yep. Okay. Well, actually, no, it's not. It needs to come down a bit. There we go. So, basically what we're going to do is we're going to hide the ham and toolbar for right now. Just to make things easier to select. Um, file, export selected, SP, sword, export, done, delete, file, export selected, SP, Base, export. done, delete, unhide all, select that, file, export, selected, SP Hammer, export, done, and then file, export, selected, SP, let's just stick with Falchion, Falchion. Okay, that's our basics, and that's my belting. Okay. Now let's go ahead and tool import spiritual weapon base. And before we load in any of the weapons, we're going to go ahead and we're going to subdivide it a few times until it's nice and smooth. And then we're going to dynamax hit at 256. And with a, sm a smaller, somewhat smaller, we're going to smooth out where it meets the base. We're also going to smooth out the tip of the tendril. Okay. Right. Now we're going to add in the subtools. Append. And this subtool is going to be the sword. And we're going to hit X and make sure that we've got a good. No, we don't. Uh, it's not symmetrical. Oh, well. Hold on just a second. Let me look up something. Recenter uh, symmetry feed brush. That's not accurate. That doesn't work. Uh, symmetry not centered, algorithmic forum. Sorry about taking so long, but this is a... No, uh, substance painter. Hmm. 
Let's see what this is. I, I am going to have to mute for a moment. I'm going to be away for a moment. Okay, I'll be right back. That was a bomb. Let me see if it worked, though. Okay. Okay, now let's see if that worked. And zoom in here. It worked. Good. The reason I did that is so that I can detail the sword in symmetry so that whatever I do on this side is also done to that side. So the next thing I need to do is I need to subdivide it a couple times. And dynamesh it at 512. Okay, now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to subdivide it again two more times, so it's going to be really high, high resolution, so I can do all sorts of fancy stuff to this here blade. And I'm going to turn it this way so I've got more screen space to do what I'm about to do. Now, ow! A spiritual weapon by its nature is going to be all fancy dancy smoothy and is in general going to look prettier than all but the most epic of physical weapons because it looks like the god's weapon. So we got to add in some decos. The first thing that we're going to add in, well, first of all let me go ahead, let's go to, where is it, IMM gemstone, there we go. We're going to add in a gemstone. Make sure that we turn off or turn on back face mask. And we're going to make a nice large gemstone at the base. Okay, that's good enough. And now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to subtool and we're going to split unmasked parts. The reason for that is this needs to be given a bit of uh, um, mesh smoothing. We're now going to the blade, and here we're going to use Orb Cracks 2, but we're going to use a Z Sub because the end result is we're actually going to be drawing out the ridges here. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. And then we're going to not worry about Lazy Mouse, and we're going to do a quick test with the squiggle. Okay, we need to make it bigger for one, and a little bit more intense. Let's make it layer, not orb cracks layer. Okay, it's a 
little bit more. Okay, that's what we want. And what we're going to do is we're going to increase the laser radius just a bit. And we're going to start drawing on basically Victorian swirls. Okay, then we're going to turn off Lazy Mouse and just draw on random bits that might be runes. And then here comes the hard part, trying to replicate what we just did. Upside down. or at least close to it. Okay. So that's our blade. It's looking kind of fancy. Now, on the cross guard, let's make sure we get this as close to flat as possible. We're going to do something similar. We're going to make it a little bit smaller. And what we're going to do is we're just going to draw on a silhouette and fill it in and then another one here okay now we're going to do it on this side Okay, frame out. Alright, now we're going to zoom back in and we're going to do a, just a little bit of detailing inverted on this. And what it's going to be is it's going to be just like a little actually we need to back turn lazy mouse back on and make it a little bit bigger again. And do the same thing here. It doesn't have to be anything specific. And since we're doing a generic spiritual weapon, not the spiritual weapon of a given deity, then it's better that it's not. And then finally, we're going to come here. We're going to select a section of the pommel. We go to masking inverse, deformation, inflate. There we go. Now let's frame out. There we go. That is the basis of the weapon itself. Nice and fancy and, 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 and all, all sorts of stuff like that. 
while we're at it let's go ahead and subdivide those gems delete lower and we're going to merge down there and we have our fancy dancy spiritual longsword okay now before we do any of the other weapons and load them in and make and fancy them up we have to make the rest of this so we're going to start by doing what we did before we're going to use the snake hook tool we're going to make it big and we're going to pull it out this way and then i'm going to kind of bring it bring this out like that some of these will just since they won't actually be holding on to the blade okay now we're going to take on um, geometry we're going to we're going to subdivide it again and we're going to dynamic it at 256 and subdivide it again now we're going to take this center here we're going to pull it up up oh, nope too far in okay then we're going to go back to slash once again we're going to just draw in little bits of swirl that will catch paint or catch the eye if you don't paint it if you print it out of transparent Okay, that's our basic energy thingy. So now we need to go ahead, sub tool, insert, it's an insert, polymesh 3D, and we're going to import that base that we used before the uh, magic circle base. And while it's selected, we go to geometry and position and change that position to zero to center it again and let's go ahead and use move let's zoom in so i can see to make sure that we're actually going all the way to the bottom here okay There we go. Frame out. And while we're doing this, let's go ahead and dynamesh at 512 the base. Okay. Now, we're going to hide the sword. And we're going to load in the axe. Or the hammer, rather. And once again, we've got to go to geometry and position. And change its x position to zero. Alright, now the next thing that we're going to do. We're going to go to move. Or down and back because we want it standing on that energy piece okay that, that gets us good all right now we're going back to draw and we're going to subdivide it a bit until it's nice and smooth and dynamesh 512 
and then we're going to turn on symmetry. And once again, we're going to decorate it. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to go upright as we can. We're going to start selecting random sections of the handle. And we're going to make these into areas that are pushed out. So we've got a masking, inverse, deformation, inflate. Okay. And just give it a little bit more interest to the handle. And now we're going up to the top side and we're going to start writing in runes. And this is a situation we're going back to the layer brush. We're going to use Chagal, Algiz, um, Manaz, and Raido. If you know why, feel free to tell everybody else. Oh, wait a minute, no. Better way to do it is... Let's uh, go up to Lazy Mouse is on. Let's focal shift to zero. Do it this way. Actually, no. Let's first go to geometry and subdivide it. Yeah. So does anyone know why I chose the runes I chose. Okay, those are the runes. We're then going to use masking and invert and deformation. We're going to turn it kind of to the side and we're actually going to inflate negative. Hold on a second. I hit the wrong thing. Yeah. Oops. This is the hammer. Now, can anyone tell me why I chose Hagal, Ansis, Manaz, and Raido as the runes for the hammer? I'm also going to add in a gem on the front and back just to keep him with the, uh, the gem. Bit. Sorry about that. Okay, there we go. So I need a co-host. 
Yes, I made the gem IMM. I first made the gem itself in 3D Studio Max. I then created an insert mesh brush and ZBrush for the gem. And under position, make sure that X position is zero to kind of center it. And here we have the gems. This is the hammer for spiritual hammer. Now what I need real quick, I need to merge that down with the other one. And then subdivide it a couple times. Then merge the hammer itself down and dynamesh it at 512. Now, can anyone tell me why I chose the runes I chose on the side of the head? Just to show you, let's hide the hammer and make and make the sword visible. The sword for spiritual weapon. And then let's append the tollbar. Or falchion actually. And geometry position of zero and X. To put it into uh, the English alphabet, I'm going to put the English alphabet equivalents in the, in the uh, chat. So we have the tollbar. Now the tollbar is not going to have as much on the blade, deco on the blade as the other sword did, but it is going to have a bit more on the pommel. In fact, let's go ahead and hide the hand. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use the orb cracks brush. Let's make sure we have laser mouse turned on and small to moderate uh, lazy step. And we're going to make a fleur de lis. And then this. Oh, 
Okay, so we have the third de on the pommel. And we're then going to come in here and on the cross guard, we're going to do some more just dig in decorations. Okay, and then the next thing, last thing that we're going to do is we're going to go up here to the top and we're going to make it almost a uh, solar symbol. There we go. So, we have our various spiritual weapons. It's 949. So after I do these three and save them out, I'm going to call it a, a night. Alright. So I'm going to do some first <coughs> merge down and then count my three five twelve dynamesh. Now, oh, I'm going to duplicate it twice and put these down so I can uh, merge down, select this one, merge down, and select this one, and merge down. So I have three different ones to select. And then geometry, dynamesh. You'll notice it's not just held by the tendril, but also by that thing there. And now, this one, we go to Decimation Master. We're going to make it 70,000. And while it's processing, add some liquid to my vape okay ah the taste of the quantum foam Okay, now we hide this one, make this one visible, and we do the same to it. Geometry Dynamesh. And 35k. 35k po uh, points means 70k triangles.
I spilled a little. Yeah. Low battery, yay. And reordering. And computing, and it's done. And then we hide that one. Geometry. Dynamesh. And we we do that one for 70k. While I change the batteries in my vape. I'll take these over to the charger after the show. And there we go. And that's the Falchion. So we're going to export spiritual Falchion spell. Export spiritual hammer spell. Export spiritual long sword spell. Okay. And that is our three or our two spells with four total effects. Yay. So, what do you think of those guys? Spiritual Falchion, or Tulwar, Spiritual Hammer, Spiritual Longsword, and the Bigby's Hand spell. We got those done in a little over an hour and a half. Another option we could do make a waste up butler with swirly bits below with a warning print in clear resin invisible servant or better yet a base with footprints on it. Invisible Servant, Invisible Stalker, a character who has cast invisibility, and all sorts of things like that. So I take it Kim's ki the kids Kim is babysitting have gotten loud again. Oh, wait, no. The kids she was sitting for came home. Yay! So I take it she's probably on her way home. Um, yeah, see, back in the 80s, I believe it was Grenadier. It may have been... Yeah, it was Grenadier. It was, was it Grenadier or Ralph Partha? One of the two miniatures companies created a set. They used to have giant lords and dragon lords as their box sets. Yes, big box sets were about like that back then. And, you know, you know they decided to create humor lords. It was like eight or ten figures, and fully half of them were four, un four skeletons sitting around a table with dice and books and a, and a uh, dungeon master screen, and an 
and the skeleton pizza delivery boy. Um, but yeah, one of them was bonus invisible stalker figure, and it was a base with two bird fit prints on it. Mm-hmm. Been quite a while. Then there was the old complete EAT adventurer, and it was just little guy kind of hunched over with piles of stuff where the pile was bigger than he was. He's my baby girl. Look at this baby. Yep, she's, she has a tendency to stick the tip of her tail under her feet so it doesn't advertise how happy she is. I don't know why. See, when a cat curls the tip of its tail, they're happy. When they start wagging from the base, they're not. Yeah, I've been painting since like 84 or so, and there was one place I used to get figures from that had some old figures, some like 70s era figures. Yeah. I mean, by 70s era, I mean those little tiny little blobby things that, you know, if you tried to use them on a table nowadays, they look like halflings. They look like overweight kind of halflings with elephantitis because they were there, there was no real technique for it back then. It was not a it was not a replicable technique. And you know, if you brought out also back in the day, if I brought this Nord warrior onto the board, he'd be a half giant. Because his eyes are 32 millimeter. The original version of 25 millimeter scale was full on. 25 millimeters was the height to the head. So that would be how tall they were. And the bases were also usually about 20 millimeters. Yeah. So, I like this scale better. It feels better. Still small enough for the humans to be human. And for halflings to be halflings. But large enough to get a decent amount of detail and paintability on them. Well, like, for example, his male. And the male on the Valandar figure. Without being too big. Some of the 40K figures nowadays are too big. You know, some of them, human figures this tall. And I don't mean Space Marines. I mean, like, some of the Eldar, you know, all stretched out. They're like this freaking tall if you stood them on their feet. Mm-hmm. Now, I will admit, there's one exception. For mass battle games, and by this I usually tend to prefer, I'm, I'm usually referencing the more of the science fiction side of things, I kind of like 8 millimeter or 10 millimeters. A millimeter scale. And yes, I, I whipped up a few of them for a game I was working on. Um, let me see, where did I put them? Yeah, here we go. Here's one set of basic groupers. One stand representing an entire, entire fire team. And yes, this was printed on the uh, CR-10. Basic infantry. Age of Sigmar basically they got a new CEO and he wanted to shake everything up. So we have the Reboot Yuleman and whatever the elf girl's name is resurrecting a dead or creating a new Eldar god. And then on the fantasy side, he was like, let's make fantasy more like 40K. 
So all of a sudden it turns out that the good guy elves, the high elves and the wood elves, were bad guys all this time. Uh, the Lady of the Lake was really Lilaeth, one of the elven goddesses. Um, yeah, and you know, basically the whole el old world was ripped into chunks. All of the gods were either torn apart like one of the dwarven gods, or were completely rebooted like Sigmar. And then thousands of years in the future, you know, you've got the mul these multiple realms, and the actual baseline troops. If you put a human basic halberdier from the Empire into Age of Sigmar, he'd have stats of all ones that week. Yeah, and the Stormcast Eternals are basically space marines in a fantasy world. They're elite warriors taken off their home, pla home place, imbued with vast power that not all survive as basic line troopers for this vastly powerful godlike entity. Th even the look of them screams fantasy space marines. Yeah. And with all these skirmish games that are popular now and the uh, 40k, it's a lot of science fiction. There's not really a good fantasy mass battle or skirmish battle system out there right now, and that's kind of depressing. You know? Someone needs to come up with something. Someone needs to make one. Well, it's four after ten. Um, Kim and Mark, I think y'all are the only ones that are currently awake and actually responding. But I'll have a, I should have a decent number of views as I, as after I post these up on Thingiverse. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and post the Bigby's Hand and the three spiritual weapons up on Thingiverse. And I'll probably print them all out and only paint the bases. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and do my usual. Yeah, it's amazing. I've been this is this is episode 107 plus the two extra episodes of, you know, doing the proportions and the posing. And I don't have a catchphrase. Go figure. Anyway, I'm going to hold up my hand. I do have a catch thing and that's doing a hand thing to count down. I don't know sign language. I'm just fiddling my hands. But um, let me go ahead and refresh this so I can actually get a better view of when it's actually coming through. But yeah, I'm going to stick my hand up and I'm going to count to one. When I get to one, I'm going to say something really stupid and sign off. So that'll be a five, a four, a three, a two, and a one. Megatron has fallen! I am leader of the Decepticons now! <laughs>